Hi everyone. My name is Tejas Chopra and I am an engineer at Netflix. It is an honor to be presenting at TEDx Woodside this year. The theme for this year's TEDx conference is Rebirth. We are in the midst of a pandemic and it is a moment to reflect on our choices and their impact on the environment. We see the growth of blockchain-based applications and Web 3.0 today and there are concerns about its impact on our environment. As an engineer, I took an opportunity to review the environmental impact of the software that I write. And today, I will focus on carbon footprint aware software development practices. What is carbon footprint? It is a measure of the greenhouse gas emitted by processes, people, products, and organizations. In 2019, the average emissions by an American were around 33,000 pounds per year, approximately 100 pounds per day. Interestingly, breathing is just two pounds out of it. The remaining 98 pounds is devices, food, and travel. Digital activity that includes television, smartphones, smartwatches, which is most of our day now accounts for as much as 4% of the overall carbon footprint. Now you may wonder, why is this 4% important? It is because it'll grow to 8% in the next seven years, and it'll actually reach as much as 14% by 2040. So now is the time for us to pause, reflect, and act. Our smartphone, an iPhone 12, emits around 150 pounds of carbon dioxide, of which 110 pounds is emitted during manufacturing and only 40 pounds during use. So by the time the device is in your hand, it has already emitted 80% of its lifetime's carbon dioxide. The best way to reduce your carbon footprint is to reduce your device footprint. Choose your devices carefully. Not only focus on the usage, but also on the manufacturing efficiencies. Our laptop emits around 0.8 pounds of carbon dioxide. The modem emits around one pound of carbon dioxide. A single email without att attachments generates four ounces of carbon dioxide. And if you add the attachments, it can actually double. Now imagine the impact of thousands of unread emails on your environment. Another critical part of our lives today is artificial intelligence. How many times do you Google search or scroll through social media platforms? There's actually research that throws light on the impact of AI on the environment. Training any artificial intelligence model can in some cases release as much as five times the carbon dioxide of a typical American car in its entire lifetime. So far, we have discussed only the devices which form the client side of the equation. It is just the tip of the iceberg. And the server side actually contributes as much as 65% to the total carbon footprint. This includes the data centers, the networking infrastructure, all of that. We as software developers can do our bit by writing energy efficient software to reduce the carbon footprint. How might we do it? In general, the rule of thumb in software development is to write code that can bring the CPU to a lower power state sooner. You can use efficient mathematical operations, reuse computed results, remove dead code, avoid conditional branches and jumps in your code, and perform more operations per loop of execution. This will actually get your CPU to a lower power state sooner. Using energy efficient algorithms and data structures based on the use case and wherever possible, using event driven architectures instead of polling, writing multi threaded code that does more work for a shorter amount of time and gets CPU to an idle state faster are some other techniques that you can use as an engineer to reduce your software's energy impact. Research shows that using appropriate compilers and compiler flag options can reduce the energy consumption by more than 50%. Programming languages are another critical factor. In fact, the ones that are closer to the metal are 
termed to be more energy efficient than scripting languages, for example. In the software world, there is a gap that we do not have the tools to measure the impact of all the layers in our software stack. I imagine a future where energy efficiency of the code will be a first class citizen of our software life cycle, just like observability, metrics and testing are. In fact, the continuous integration, continuous delivery pipelines will test not just for the correctness of code, but also for the energy impact. A world where if you write code, it will only be rolled into production if it is more energy efficient compared to the previous version. Whether as an engineer or as a consumer of technology, I believe we all have a shared responsibility towards our environment, making better choices for our devices, using more energy efficient appliances, reducing our device footprint, and simple steps like adding plants to our workstations are some of the ways in which we can do our share. If there is anything that this pandemic has taught us, it is that we are all in it together and we can collectively decide the fate of our environment and of our world. Here's to better and informed choices and a better world for the future. Thank you so much.